Arsenal could only manage a 2-2 draw yesterday against West Ham. They were 2-0 up as they were against Liverpool, but once again uh, conceded two goals to drop points. Hammer blow, hammer blow. West Ham are called the Hammers. That's why it's a hammer blow. Saka, of course, missing that penalty when it was 2-1. Uh, taking a look at what that means of the title odds, Manchester City very much solidified now as favourites, 9-4 on. Arsenal 7-4. Arsenal remain four points clear. City have a game in hand and, of course, a week Wednesday, it is City against Arsenal at the Etihad. Uh, Craig, you went on yesterday. Just your thoughts overall from what we saw from Arsenal, particularly in well, the second what, half? What's your boys talking about it? And uh, I, I'm not in the camp that they're bottling it. Right. But... At this stage of the season, when you are under more pressure, those basic errors come back to haunt you. And obviously, look, people miss penalties. But it was the mistakes, the party mistake, then the Gabriel diving in when actually he should have read the situation better because it was a bad touch. And then nobody picking up for the, the bone goal. You know, just everybody coming out and, and great finish, don't get me wrong. So, you know, two weeks in a row, 2-0 up, playing well enough early on in the game and just and just basics but it gets in your head this stage of the season when you're right. going for a title and people start asking you questions well I don't know if Stevie it certainly got in mind when we were at Celtic it was like the pressure and the, the media were saying you guys are not playing well you're not playing as well as you were at Christmas time is the pressure getting to you that's what they kept asking every week the, yeah. are you looking tired is the pressure getting to you making mistakes you're dropping points and you bat it away no 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 there is a pressure. There is a pressure, and it's it's how you handle it, and you got you got to handle it by doing the basics and not make. If they put it one way, if they keep making these errors, they're not going to win the title. It's pure and simple. So how do you stop it? Well, Partey just didn't. Was it just me? or Was he a bit lax in possession? It was lax in possession, but again, there's. It's not because of the way the game's played today. It's, it was the same previously when teams played 4-4-2. The ball you don't want is a straight ball when you're facing your own goal 30 yards for goal. Because it can only go wrong. Right. You know? So, yes, it was a little lackadaisical, but it was just a poor choice of ball. You know? Miss them out. Why are you putting somebody under pressure? Again, again it's about managing the game at 2-0. So you don't put somebody in a position where that could happen. But psychologically, how do you turn the page on what's happened for these last two? Well, the coaches have to get onto them and keep banging home all the things they've done all season. OK. That's the important thing is that they remember everything that got them from the first game to where they are now and just concentrate on it and tell them, don't, watch, don't listen to social media, don't read the papers, don't watch the TV. That's one thing to say, it, isn't it? Oh. Well, but that's what you've got to do. Right. But I think you've got... It's not, it's, who's, it, who's it going to help if you're sitting on social media or you're sitting watching programmes programs like us yeah. talking about bottling it and pressure? You don't do it. It's, 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 it's madness. Because it can only go one way. Right. But if Concentrate. You're, if you're an Arsenal player, right, I think you're in a good position if you've, if you've got it in your own head and you're comfortable with the fact that very rarely... Not always, but very rarely, winning a title is a cakewalk, right? There's the odd occasion, but usually there's somebody breathing down your neck, maybe one, maybe two, and there's bad results, and you have to pick yourself up. And as long as they understand that they're, they're facing these hurdles at the moment, then they can pick themselves up. But if all of a sudden they were thinking, oh, we're, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we we're almost home and dry, and now they're in a much more precarious position, then that's a problem. But I'm, I'm kind of hoping that these Arsenal players realised that there was going to be some down days and, and City were going to go on a right. run. And they've got to be rational, right? The two main things, in my opinion, that, that, that went against them was a bad challenge from Gabriel. Is that really a shock? Do we think Gabriel is the next Franz Beckenbauer? Right. He's not. He made a mistake, and it's not a shock he made a mistake. And you can miss a penalty. So... If you look at the big picture, those are just two little football things that have got nothing to do with bottling it or anything else. That's what they've got to think about. Don, you take a look at their upcoming fixtures. Of course, a nice one on Friday when they take on Southampton, and then it's all about that clash against City on Wednesday. But not only that, they then got Chelsea, Newcastle, Brighton. Not ideal. No. I always thought April was the, was the month that might hurt them, Dan. I said that, you know, last month, six hard games... I actually don't fancy Arsenal to beat Newcastle. It's in James's Park. 
I don't know that was the scene of the crime that cost them top four last year. I think Newcastle, apart from their blip against Villa at the weekend and a 12.30 kickoff, I think I think they'll be absolutely fine. And I just think you're looking at the steam train that's Man City at the minute and they're just swatting everyone away. It's a young team. I, I think I'm in the camp with the boys. I was one foot in, one foot out where, you know, when you turn up against West, West Ham, you can't blow that lead. You can't drop two points. I thought it was a point gain at Anfield, so I was slightly sort of a little bit sort of feeling for them a little bit. But when you give two goals away against West Ham and you've dropped four points in two games, then you look at the fixture list and you see it's Man City in a couple of games' time where I don't think Arsenal beat them at the Etihad. I don't think they'll beat them at St. James's Park, Newcastle. Maybe Brighton's a bit of a tough game for them as well. And I think the pressure's just getting to them. I don't think they'll do it. They don't have to... Well, they don't necessarily have to beat... Man City at the Etihad because it's so early on depending on what happens in the Southampton game now I know bottom of the league looking like certain relegation uh, candidates but ironically that is one of the places Arsenal dropped points this season mm. at St Mary's it wasn't a great performance they dropped some points down there but they, can, they can't afford to go into the City game with anything other than a, a, a stellar performance and result against Southampton I think anything if they, somehow they were to drop points again in the Southampton game, I think that could be the hammer blow for them. Because, you know, drop, you know losing a 2-0 lead at Anfield is one thing. But then doing it at West Ham and, and not picking up all three against the bottom team in the Premier League would be a disaster. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.